Welcome to the Rotowire rankings video that Jim Coventry and I do every week. I'm Jeff Erickson. He's Jim Coventry. We are from Rotowire. We're going to depart from our usual usual norm. Uh, we're going to talk about the Colts. They announced this morning reversing course. They're going back to Anthony Richardson. This is contrary to what they said just on Monday that they were going to roll with Joe Flacco. Instead, they changed their mind again. Jim, your reaction to this? I, I imagine it comes from ownership, and we, we have a little bit of an impulsive owner out there in Indianapolis, just a tad, like you're indicating with your finger there. And so, yes, I, I think that's the case. I think when things were bad, it was like, get that quarterback out of there. And then when things weren't so good at Joe Flacco, like, get that quarterback back in there. And, and realistically, I think that's what happens. Look, they have to see what they have, and you've got to play them. Whether you design offenses that's more favorable to him, which you probably need to do, you, you probably need to go heavy, heavy run. Your defense isn't bad, but I don't know the Shane Steichen wants to do that. Yeah, I don't think so either. I I just see an absence of an overall long term plan, um, and that bothers me. Um, it shouldn't bother me. I'm not a Colts fan, but just from a fantasy perspective, mm -hmm. it might. I, I actually like Richardson better than Flacco this week from a fantasy perspective, even though I dislike it from a Colts covering perspective. I, I just think the rushing yards are just a difference there. That's the only reason why. Let's talk about another quarterback, and we'll talk about the rankings here. Kirk Cousins. Last week, I even wrote in my note that he threw for 306, 306 yards against the Saints, and yet he didn't really play all that well. Uh, there, there, there were some good big plays. But the decision-making at the end of the game was awful. Threw mm -hmm. a terrible pick on their penultimate drive. Got caught on a long sack fumble on their last drive. And then panicked. It took a long time to get off a last snap when they're out of timeouts. And then threw still, still threw short of the sticks to end the game. Just a really, really rough finish for him. I've got him at 14. You've got him at 20. I think we're closer than we think because we both dislike the matchup against Denver. Yeah, as always, we're close on these things. And once you get beyond the top 12, again, you flip them around. But but I do want to point out there's real downside with Cousins this week. We have seen it all year and in the past to a degree. Cousins gets very skittish under pressure. And I think yeah. more so post Achilles injury. And last week, New Orleans had to really try to generate some pass because they don't have one. Well, Denver doesn't have to worry about that. Denver is going to bring some real heat as they do every single week. And here's the other problem. The outlets aren't going to be great. you got Patrick Sertan, who's probably going to be on Drake London often. You have Riley Moss playing at a high level, so Darnell Mooney might not be wide open as he is a lot of weeks. And I just think there aren't going to be a lot of answers here. I think the Falcons are going to struggle to score 16 points in this game, and I think they're going to struggle to get more than one touchdown. So I am very concerned for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, the Broncos even stopped the run against the Chiefs well last week, Oh, too. they're very good. much success on, on their run play. So you could even say, oh, it's going to be a Bijan day, but that might not even be true either i mean i think it will be a bijan day i just question how great of a bijan day will be will not be an efficient day another running back that probably won't be super efficient is Brees hall hasn't oh. been i think he's actually run well lately and ever since the coordinator change but it's hard to do much when you're only getting 10 carries now you and i may disagree in this i have hall in my top 10 i think he gets a little bit more volume this week and i they just gotta throw him the ball too they just have to, Jim. It, that was, it was working, and then they well, went away from it. There is no explaining what's happened. Brees Hall, in my mind, is the most talented runner, maybe inside of Christian McCaffrey in the NFL, and he has been hot garbage for fantasy. Here is PPR totals last three games, Jeff. 12, 10, and 9. Yeah. That's, I, 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 that's, that's barely a running back, too. And this is Brees Hall. Like you said, Braylon Allen's getting seven carries a game. Why? Um, Brees Hall, like you said, not being used optimally as a receiver. It's one of the best receiving backs in the game. I think Aaron Rodgers is obviously not happy. When Aaron Rodgers is not happy, nobody's happy. And when nobody's happy, you have a dysfunctional offense. I think it's as far as it goes. I, I think they're going to, again, Indy, Indy is better against the run than we thought. They got better. They got the fourth they Buckner did back. Yeah, yeah. The, the interior, they're really good. And so now, all of a sudden, this is no longer a patsy matchup. I love Brees Hall. I just can't endorse him other than a running back too. And if you got a better option that you picked up in the early in the season, if you got a Chuba, well, Chuba Hubbard's on by is not a good example. But again, if you got somebody who picked up earlier in the season, you could even consider starting him over Hall. Yeah, I, I'm more optimistic than you because I think the Jets defense will play better against the Colts, which means the Jets will have a better chance of playing with the lead, which means mm -hmm. a better chance for more touches for Brees Hall. I like it. So I, I think the game script is going to be better this case. 
If you like this video, you like debating rankings here, please smash that like button. Subscribe so you know whenever we hit one. And it's just not rankings. It's free agents. It's matchups. It's all these things, betting and more. Just hit that subscribe button. You'll get notifications for every single one of these Rotowire videos. Moving on to wide receiver. Calvin Ridley is back from the fantasy dead. Had a goose egg like three weeks ago. Not for a lack of targets, mind you, but lack of good targets. Mm -hmm. Last week, two touchdowns against the Titans. The week before, you know, he he produced, had a big game against the uh, Lions as well. I, I, I kind of think that Calvin Ridley is as back as he's going to be. I wouldn't say back, like he's not a top 10 guy like he was in Atlanta. I've got him an 18. You're considerably more pessimistic than me. You know, man, we're not so far removed from when he had the goose eggs. And overall, it's just like Will Levis. I, I just see another implosion game coming here. And, yeah. and I hope that's not the case. But the reality is, Will Levis is a problem. And when things go his way and he has favorable looks, it's fine. They're playing Minnesota this week. Brian Flores, the corners aren't good. But the looks that Brian Flores gives, the pressure he sends consistently every week, it speeds quarterbacks up. When you speed up a bad quarterback, the mistakes compile. I don't think there's, I think he's not going to throw the downfield passes because he's going to perceive pressure too early and bail out. So I think the three week great stretch, I think it ends here. Fair enough. Fair enough. You're listening to the dulcet tones of Jim, the hater Coventry, uh, <laughs> talking about Calvin Ridley there. Uh, I, yeah, you're right. Levis is a mess. Um, played better against the Chargers, though. I thought there might have been some development. Maybe uh, I'm a Pollyannish uh, in my approach here, but he is, Will Levis is better than he was earlier this season. The Chargers are a formidable opponent, and I thought he did well against them there, all things considered. Okay, I get to be the hater here. Yes. Finally. Dave Flowers at 28 for me, 15 for you, Jim Coventry. I just hate the matchup against the Steelers. So the Steelers, there's two things that, that really work for their defense. They're pretty good against outside cor outside receivers. They're very strong there. Middle of the field, not so much. They, mm -hmm. they will give up production. The other thing is they have that bookend pass where they normally count on with TJ Watt and, Watt and Alex Highsmith. Highsmith's out. He's going to miss yeah. two to three weeks. And here's the thing. Lamar Jackson, they could have hemmed him in potentially and made it really difficult. With only one of them, now it's easy to break contain. And if he breaks contain, Flowers in the middle of the field. This is one of those matchups. And look, Flowers has been all over the board. Here are his fantasy points the last five games. Seven, 29, 18, 4, and 22. He even yeah. put a 19 in before that. So he has shown in majority of his games, he will put up strong, strong fantasy points. I think the middle of the field is attackable here, and the loss of Highsmith is a big deal for him. Yeah, big player in this game might be Preston Smith. You know, the acquisition they got right. from the Packers there. I, I think he's going to have to step up and play a big role. Obviously, Cam Hayward's huge in this component here as well. Uh, finding ways to pressure Lamar and keep him contained. Was, right. That's the thing is sometimes it's a choice. Do you get, you know, do you bring pressure or do you contain them? It's hard to do both. And I, I, but if there's a team that knows how to do it more than anybody else in the NFL, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers and Mike Tomlin. So I think that's the trade off there. There is a history. Of, of them being able to contain Lamar at least a little bit more so than other franchises. So we'll see what happens with yes. that.